Are you struggling to recover from your concussion? If so, I'm gonna walk you through what you should be considering to help you finally get over the plateau so you can get your life back. Now, one of the biggest mistakes I find that people make when they're getting help for the concussion is they are very symptom focused. They're like, well, I've got these headaches and my word finding sucks, plus I've got dizziness. And they're trying to address each and every little symptom. And most of the providers out there, unfortunately, do the same thing as well. They're like, oh, well, cool, you've got neck pain with your concussions, right? So your neck pain could definitely be giving you headaches. And so all they do is work on the neck. But the thing is, is that really the best result for you? Well, if you've been doing that work for a month or two and you're still not getting better, it's not the best results. So what do we need to consider? What actually happens in the brain following a concussion? Now there's more than this, but this is really where I want you to focus. One, the question you have to say is concussion disrupt how well the brain connects. This is not seen on re regular MRI, CT scans and stuff like that. So don't be frustrated if your imaging is normal. So if it disrupts how the brain connects, well, how do we actually measure that? How do we evaluate that? Eye movements is one of the best things, okay? So use advanced technology to record exactly what the eyes are doing, looking at stationary targets, tracking, shifting your attention, right? Tracking up and down and other things like that. I'm not a fan of this. Why am I not a fan? Because no one documents it well enough to accurately paint a picture of what they saw initially. And when you're doing pre and post testing, it's, it's just not as good as it could be. Okay. The technology is there. We might as well use it. Next, balance. Now, this is where a lot of people start thinking vestibular system, which is part of it, right? But balance gets thrown off. I'm talking about one foot in front of the other, eyes open, eyes closed, standing there, feet pretty close together, hands on hips, eyes open, eyes closed, on a firm surface, but also on a balance pad. A lot of people say, well, my balance is good. Well, get it measured. Let's actually see. A lot of people get it evaluated and it's not as good as they thought it was because they weren't tripping or clumsy running into stuff, but there's more criteria for that. Next, we've got cognition. How's your processing speed, right? How's your ability to do different tasks? And then the last thing you can also do is brain waves using what's called a QEG. So this is a good, well-rounded approach to say, how is your brain connecting? Because guess what? You can have neck pain and headaches because your eyes are not being controlled by your brain as well as should be. You can have balance issues, driving neck pain, headaches, anxiety, right? Eyes, secret energy drainer, fatigue, brain fog, word finding. So you've got all of these. You need to make sure this is looked at. It's not done in a 30 minute evaluation. For us to bring someone, if we do all this, it's going to be about two hours, two hours and 15 minutes. You can't do it in 30 minutes. You can screen someone, but you can't do a full evaluation. So that's how the brain connects. Next, we have energy. With concussions, the brain does not produce and use energy the same way. Your brain uses 25% of the body's energy when it is healthy. So when it's unhealthy, it's more inefficient. It's like having a gas guzzler, okay? You can't go as far in an F-350 as you can with a Corolla when you're given 10 gallons of gas. It's inefficient. And that's one of the reasons why people with concussions, as the day goes on, they feel worse and worse and worse because when they spend their energy, their brain doesn't connect in the way they want it to. Now, there's a lot of things that must be considered with energy. What if you have thyroid issues? What if you have hormone issues? What if you have anemia? What if you have blood sugar issues, right? If that piece is being ignored, guess what? It's going to sabotage this. That's why it's really important to get a holistic, well-rounded approach to concussion recovery, right? You wanna throw a plant in the soil if the soil sucked and didn't have good sunlight and it didn't have a water supply because it wouldn't be set up for success. Well, we need to do the same thing with the brain. And then lastly, there are immune changes in the brain 
following concussions as well. Now, there are things that can happen before concussions that can already alter your immune state in the brain. So pre-existing things do matter. Many of them you're aware of, but there will also be those you're not aware of. So when these get aligned, okay, energy, immune, and connectivity, because these all influence the other, this is where I see the best results, even if people have been to numerous other clinics. So hope you found this useful. Please find someone who uses an approach like this because this really is a full circle approach to address the dynamics of what happens in the brain following a concussion and not purely symptom chasing. Symptom chasing often leads to disappointment and a lot of wasted money as you've probably experienced. But comment, let me know what your thoughts are. And if you'd like to work with me, use the link in my bio to reach out and I look forward to working with you.